I know you've played Geometry Dash on your iPhone, but have you made Geometry Dash on your iPhone? <laughs> so what we want to be able to do is tap on our screen and have a square jump and avoid spikes. And then after that, you can customize your game with a ton of cool details. Here's a note though, if you're watching this on an iPad, it might look a little different, but don't worry, it's pretty much the same, it's just smaller. So here we are in the stage. This is where we choose what will go into our project. So to pick an object, tap the plus button at the bottom of the screen. So here we have text, shapes, characters, and in text you can also get emoji, but for this I want to use a square, so I'm going to tap square. And let's give it a name. So tap on the word square to change its name. I'm going to change it to hero so that I know it's the hero of this game. But you can name it anything you want. You can drag the square around the stage by holding and moving it around. Let's move it about halfway up on the far left side of the screen to start, right around there. Now we're going to start coding or telling the square what to do. Remember, if you ever get stuck or confused, just pause or rewind this video. So let's tap add code. So now we're in the editor where we write our code. Tap the play button on the upper right corner to play your project. So this is your project right now, but nothing's happening. And that's because we haven't told the square what to do yet. So you can tap on that pencil in the top right corner to go back to the editor. So I want to make a rule so that when I tap on the iPhone screen, the square will jump. So to do that, I'm going to tap on is tapped, which is right here. Now we need to say what happens when the iPhone is tapped. We want the square to jump, right? So down here in our keyboard are a bunch of rainbow blocks, and one of them says jump. So let's tap on that. And now let's play and see what happens. So press play, top right corner, and if we tap the iPhone, awesome! So let's go back to edit to see how this works. So if I tap on the jump block, over on the right where that little arrow is, I can see inside the block, and in it are three other blocks. There's a change Y, a turn, and another change Y block. Y means how high or low your block is on the screen. So let's try changing one of these blocks to see what happens. Turn by 360 means that the block will turn 360 degrees, or in a complete circle. But that'll take a long time, and that makes this game really easy. So we can change this by tapping on the bubble where it says 360, and putting in a new number. So first press the delete button on the bottom right corner to get rid of 360 and now let's add in 90. So that's only a quarter turn. So press check right here. Now let's play the project again. So now if I tap, there you go, it's only a quarter turn jump. That's going to make this a more challenging game and thus more fun. Now tap on edit again and let's close this rule by tapping on the top of the rule when iPhone is tapped. We can even close the entire object by tapping on the top of the turquoise bar. So now we need to add the obstacle that our square will jump over. There are two ways to do this. Tap the X on the top left corner to exit out of the editor and onto the stage. Here we can add an object that the square will jump over. We can tap on the plus button at the bottom of the screen to get a new object. So let's scroll until we find triangle, which is right here. And let's tap on it and drag it right over here. So it's at the same height as the square and it's all the way on the right. And let's name the triangle obstacle. So tap on the word triangle and delete all this and say obstacle. Press check. So I'm going to program it to move to the left towards the square and then reappear on the right hand side of the screen and do this forever. This will make it look like the square is moving forward towards all these spikes so it has to jump over them. Isn't that cool? So tap on add code to go back to the editor. Note that you could also have added this triangle by tapping plus new object at the bottom of your code here, but it's easier to set it in the stage which is why we did that. Now we need to give a rule to this triangle. Tap on the magenta game starts when from the bottom. I want to move left towards the square, so scroll right in the keyboard until you find the red change x by block and tap on it. Changing x means moving left or right. 
change x by a negative number means moving left, and change x by a positive number means moving right. Since I want the triangle to move left, I'm going to set it to negative 400. So type in this plus minus button, and then 400, zero, zero, and that's negative 400. That's the width of the iPhone screen. If you're on an iPad, set it to negative 800. Let's play it and see what happens. Cool, so we're getting somewhere. Now I want to make sure the triangle disappears and then reappears on the right and then does this again so it looks like there are a bunch of triangles that the square is moving past. So let's go back to edit. Now I want to make it disappear. So press check to get out of here and then scroll on your keyboard until you see the green blocks and find set invisibility. And let's type in 100 to set the triangle to 100% invisible or completely invisible. And let's see if that works. Press check and then press play. Cool, so it moved past and then disappeared. So let's go back to edit. Next we have to make the triangle reappear and do this all over again. But before we do, think about something. If every time the triangle did this loop, it happened in the exact same way, you could figure out how to beat the game pretty easily, right? Instead, we want to make it a little harder for the player by making them unsure of when the triangle is going to appear. So tap under the set invisibility block, so you're right there, and scroll all the way down your keyboard until you get to the blue blocks at the very end, and then tap on the wait block. We're going to tell the triangle to wait a random amount of time before reappearing. So now you have the numbers in your keypad, so if you scroll past them, you should get to these purple math blocks. And let's pick random. So we're going to set a range that will say to the square, choose any number between these two numbers. So let's go back to the numbers by scrolling back left and pick our lowest and highest numbers. So for the lowest, let's pick 0, and then tap on the second number. And for the highest, let's pick 3,000. And these are milliseconds, so we're picking we're basically telling the square to wait between 0 and 3 seconds. So let's see what happens. Press play. Cool, I bet this is awesome, but because we haven't made the triangle visible again, we don't know what's it, what it's actually doing. So let's fix that. So go back to edit. So we're back in our rules, and we need to add another set invisibility block underneath the wait block, but above the end of the rule. So an easy way to do this is to press down on the other invisibility block we've already made and copy it. So if you hold down on this block and then pick copy, if you tap under this blue block, under the weight, if you hold down right here, then pick paste, boom, you got it right there. Isn't that cool? So here, though, in the bubble, we don't want 100 because that means it's invisible. Instead, we want it to be 0% invisible, so we're going to write 0, and this means we can see it. So then press check, and let's take a look. Oh, cool. Uh-oh. But we never moved it back, did we? So we got to go back to edit. So now, after the triangle reappears, we want to make sure it restarts at the right side of the screen. So we're going to find a red block called Set Position. So scroll until you find the red blocks and pick Set Position. If you're on an iPad, you want to write 750 for this first one. But if you're on the iPhone, type 400. For the Y bubble, we want to pick the exact height of the square. I don't know it off the top of my head, but that doesn't matter because we can use something called a value to represent it. So scroll past these numbers, and past the purple ones too, until you find the yellow blocks. And you're going to look for the hero, or whatever you named your square, values, and you're going to pick Y position. This value represents how high the square is at this moment. So let's see what happens. Cool, so it took close to three seconds, and then it ended up right over here. But now the triangle is just chilling on the right side of the screen, so we need to put this whole thing in a repeat forever so that it will always repeat going left. So let's go back to the editor, and let's put all this stuff in a repeat forever loop. 
and you want to tap above the change x by square but below the top of the when. If you accidentally tap on the when and it closes, just tap on it again and it'll open again. But we want to tap right here so we can put a block before change x. And we want to find a repeat forever block. So let's scroll all the way to the blue blocks and find repeat forever, tap on it. Then carefully drag each of the other blocks you had into here and make sure they're in the right order. So, so hold down on your change x block and then drag it slowly up into the repeat forever. Do the same thing with the others. Hold down and drag it in. Hold down for a second and then drag it in. Set invisibility and then set position. So the order should be change x, set invisibility, wait, set invisibility, set position. So let's see if it works. Cool, but when it appears back on the right, we see a blink on the left for a second, and that's actually because we can change one order. If we set invisibility to a zero after we set position, that would be even better. So why don't we do that? So now the order should be change x, set invisibility, wait, set position, then set invisibility to zero. Now let's see what it looks like. Cool, so now it looks like the square is moving past a bunch of triangles. Awesome. Let's go back to edit. So now there's no real consequence if the square touches the triangles though, right? So let's fix that. So tap on the obstacles turquoise container, this triangle rule, so it closes up and let's reopen the square rule. So right below when iPhone is tapped, let's tap on plus new when. So we want the square to disappear when it touches the triangle, right? So let's scroll until we find collisions, so it's right here, and let's pick bumps. So this rule means that when one thing bumps another, something will happen to square. So let's tap on the first bubble where it says anything, and let's pick our hero, the square. And let's tap on the second bubble, and let's pick our obstacle, the triangle. So when the hero bumps the obstacle, we decide what happens. So in here, we want our square to spin and then disappear, so as to show that it's died. So tap on the rainbow spin block, and then let's go over to the green blocks and find set invisibility. And let's set it to 100. So let's see what happens. All right, if I jump and avoid the triangle, great, but if I don't, oh my God, it exploded. It spun and disappeared. What a tragedy. And there you go. So that's the basics of Geometry Dash. Now you can add your own customizations by adding a cool background, changing the characters, or doing whatever you want. Publish it to the community to play and remix. Alright, see you later.